Sure. So both of these drugs work by inhibiting something called complement. So the complement pathway is a specialized arm of the immune system. Um, and there's really strong evidence to suggest that geographic atrophy in macular degeneration uh, works through misregulation of this complement cascade. So pegcitocoplan and avacin pegol work by inhibiting different parts of the complement cascade. Pegcitocoplan works a little bit higher up in the cascade by blocking something called C3, and avacin pegol works a little bit lower blocking something called C5. Yeah, so we know very well that it's generally pretty dangerous to compare results across trials. Uh, but sometimes that type of comparison is the only way that we can get meaningful information about relative efficacy. So when we compare trials, there are bad ways to do it and good ways or maybe less bad ways to perform these comparisons. So certainly the wrong way to do it is to just look at the top line data from different trials and compare the numbers because we know that the Trials are different, the inclusion and exclusion criteria are different, the populations are different and so forth. So perhaps the right way to do it is to try to match those inclusion and exclusion criteria and the study design as much as possible. And that's what we did in our study. We used an approach called uh, uh, matched adjusted indirect comparisons or MAIC to really match those trial designs as much as possible. And um, you know, that's that's that was the analysis that we performed. You know, this approach is well validated. It's used in multiple fields uh, and some regulatory agencies actually require this for approval. Um, but of course, when we think about the results, we need to keep those caveats in mind. So in our study, uh, we found a greater benefit with Pegcita Copeland monthly uh, compared to Avacin capped at Pegel monthly when those trial designs were matched and a similar benefit for every other month Pegcita Copeland compared to uh, monthly avacin captive pegol But of course, as we discussed, um, the, the caveats of that trial design need to be kept in mind as we interpret these results. Yeah, so the endpoints for all these geographic atrophy studies has been a reduction in the growth of geographic atrophy. And, uh, you know, as you pointed out, Derby, um, versus oaks we saw a meeting of the, of the of the primary endpoint in oaks but not derby you know there are a lot of reasons why this could have happened so one of the probably the most obvious reasons is that oaks and derby had rel a quite broad inclusion criteria they allowed for example atrophy that involved the center of the vision called the fovea as well as what we call extrafobial atrophy and this matters because during this trial we learned that extrafobial atrophy progresses faster so if you're looking at a, a therapy that tries to slow down the growth of atrophy, the, uh, the, 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 the atrophy that grows faster or the extrafobial atrophy is the better pattern to study. Um, you know, this was uh, figured out in, in the GATHER2 study, which was performed subsequent. They had the benefit of that insight and restricted patients to extrafobial atrophy alone. That was the right way to do it. And I suspect for future GA studies, uh, they'll do the same. Um, but because of that, because of that broad inclusion criteria, uh, there may have been some dilution of the treatment effect. So Derby did not meet its primary endpoint, but we did see meaningful effect over time. We did see meaningful effect if patients uh, in a secondary pre-specified analysis were restricted to just the extrafobial component. Um, and um, over two years, we see similar benefits between Oaks and Derby. So, you know, as we think about those differences, there were probably some baseline differences, even though the inclusion and exclusion criteria were the same, that may account for that difference. And, you know, importantly, the FDA in reviewing these data uh, concluded overall that the treatment effect was meaningful across both studies. And personally, I, I agree with that recommendation. So in the clinical trial, the primary endpoints for these two trials or for all these trials was at one year. Um, but, uh, you know, we see significant benefits, um, not just at one year, but even further. So in, in the uh, Oaks and Derby trials, we have data out to two years. And in uh, those trials, we inc interestingly uh, appear to observe an increasing benefit over time. You know, the, the reasons for this are still not understood. But we hypothesize that maybe there's a cumulative effect of ongoing therapy, and uh, those trends still need to be explored. But you know, I think um, 
you know, in a chronic disease, this is something that's going to show benefit, hopefully, over a lifetime and not something, you know, we're not looking for immediate results, but really long-term results.